You know, I'm Challenger, I have no life, and I'm Asian, so I probably can get rank 1. Previously on... I think I was 599 LP still, because I won one and lost one. Don't remember, but um... Today we're going to be going over a game where I play an interesting champion, but... It doesn't matter about the champion that I play, because it's all about the footwork, the fleet footwork, the macro play on what and how the game goes. And uh, just, uh, it's really interesting to talk about, and I think it's a good way to explain why taking big risks, as well as big aggression, aggressive plays, sorry, my bad, are really good when you're behind. I will be getting into that. But first, instead of that game, we're going to show you a war game, because, uh... It's a build-up. Like, you know, when you haven't jerked off for a while, it's a build-up. So in this game, essentially, I play Warwick. Um, I start bot side. Why do I start bot side? Eh. Can I gank Janna and Ezreal? Hmm, depends. But I'm pretty sure Caitlyn and Lulu push in, and mm, they don't really get pressured by Shivana because she's a, you know, she's a farm jungler. Also, Shivana, even if she starts topside, uh, she can't do dragon level 3 because she'll be too low in hit points. She needs skirmish or saber to solo it, so I don't have to worry about her. What I will be doing is maybe trying to hunt her down and find her in the jungle somewhere or try and gank mid or top. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Sounds like a game plan? Sure. Apparently they also have three support mains, so this one should be an easy one. If you guys haven't noticed, uh, I did a three camp full clear on my bot side because, mm, I don't know, it just kind of felt like it. Am I trying to force gank somewhere? Three, you know, three camp gank? Not really, don't really care. And I sure as hell don't want my one side getting cleared by uh, Shivana. Like where she takes a grump and she started topside. Anyways, I see a Shivana. I'm seeing an Ari. I'm like, hmm, maybe I can gank her. But then I see, wait, look, look at her pathing. Whoa, whoa, let me just sneak in this bush a little. And fear her and do some damage. And she flashes over the wall. Unfortunately, my Zed does not have... His W, hmm, unlucky, but I pinged it. He did all he could have done. Maybe he could have set up and waited his cooldowns if he was smarter, or he was doing something else. I'm not really sure, don't really care because I did all I could to provide information to my mid laner so he can use that info to, uh, I don't know, plan out what comes up in like the next five seconds. With that being said, I was counting the Shivana CS and I'm pretty sure she only had 16 or 12, so I knew one camp on her left side was up and I decided to take it and I keep pinging and tracking where she is. Um, while this is happening, I'm like, okay, uh, what can I do top side? I'm gonna look for this gank. Eh, it looks like he's coming for a ward, but then I say, hey, this guy looks pretty good to kill. I'm pretty sure I held my Q, but for some reason it kind of screwed up and didn't fear him towards Rumbo. But anyways, flash over the wall because I know he's going to Q over with this little, little, little pocket pistol thing. And then I say, hmm, okay, that's about it. Time to do my rates and maybe golems. I'm thinking about getting a time, Matt. Let's see what I do. Yeah, I am smart. I do farm out for my golems, but unfortunately my top laner dies and I say, hmm, sucks to suck. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't know, just kind of screwing around with the Kled, I don't think it can kill me. But then all of a sudden, I level up and I'm like, wait, I have mana for Q, so maybe it's time to auto Q W. I mean, auto Q auto. Freebies, by the way, I did have time at after my Krugs, but, you know, something came up in top lane, so I decided, hey, it's time to do top lane. I pushed in top lane as well, because Kled doesn't have TP. We already killed him once, so why would he have TP again? And he misses all this farm, so good job me. Next up, two options you can think in your mind. Hmm, maybe I should head top lane and do a gank. He has no flash, I think? I don't remember, but um, he could be an easy kill. You know, repeat, he won't expect it, but my camps are bot side, and if I do get spotted in the top side, my camps in the bot side are gone. Shivana will take him unless I have ward coverage, so it's just more like efficient to be bot side. Now, I'm level 6, and guess what? I want to dive bottom, because that's what every jungler likes to do when they're pushing and they're winning, and people are low like this, uh, is to dive bottom. And I want to do next wave, and I'm like, what can I do? I could have actually done blue buff before actually ganking, but then I decide, all right, it's time. Uh, the operation is good, just the way it was pulled off was bad, because uh, right here I'm supposed to Q, I'm pretty sure I pressed it, but it didn't go off for some reason, and I should have followed her. Secondly, she jukes my ulti, hmm, unlucky. Some players like the juke, some players just like to sit there and walk in a straight line. It's actually kind of RNG. I think good players will always try and juke, but uh, other players will walk in a straight line. It's a, uh, yeah, it's hard, it's a mechanical thing, but it doesn't matter because, yeah, it goes poorly, that sucks, doesn't matter, we still have a lead. Secondly, I should have killed Ezreal, hmm, unlucky. Instead of chasing Shivana, hmm, yeah. 
So plan, pretty good. The operation of it, hmm, sucks. Just remember, you're looking at a top 50 player and season seven peak rank seven player, by the way. And when you're watching this, you may be like, hey, I could be rank seven too if I see, I, oh, this guy's so bad. That's true, you can be rank seven too. So what are you waiting for? One up me. I challenge you to do challenge to rank seven. Mm, let's let's opt that up a little bit. Challenge to rank six. So then that way I can say this guy's better than me and I'm an idiot. Challenge accepted my friend as uh, one might say. But in all seriousness, the plan was good. Even if Shivana was there, I think we could have pulled it off. Um, if Ari was there though, eh, bad things could happen. But luckily, my Zed got a kill earlier on mid, so he has lane priority, which means he should be able to be the one to roam or ping wherever Ari is. So it's going to be a 3v3. We already know Clay doesn't have TP, and we also have top priority in a sense where Rumble should have his TP before him or something. Now, if you didn't see in the previous clip, uh, Shivana just died, and I realized she only did her bot side, which means she didn't do her top side, and I can grab her blue for free because she died with no blue buff so right here very easy kill or is it mm, Ari dashes away don't care anymore but then she dashes in and I'm like she fucked up because she can't R away it's like a one second cooldown and secondly um I'm not sure what's going on with my Q it's not holding I should be holding the follow but for some reason it is not I actually don't know what's going on but uh yeah this Shivana is stupid because she can't go in like that it's a 1v2 um, and she can't do that in our face. Maybe she was trying to rely on her Kled coming down or something and he was like pinging it. So in that sense, then it's a good thing, but I think she went in a little bit too early because she's supposed to bait us into fighting her uh, until Kled can arrive and she has to survive. So that way, you know, she gets a 2-4-0 or something like that. Essentially though, what happens here is Caitlyn and Lulu win lane, that's expected. Um, they rotate top and I've got the notion they want top tower so yeah that's doable we have wards in the jungle hardcore and I say you know what they should be fine top lane they really know where Shivana should be or something so I want to do an unexpected thing where I just go bottom um honestly I think just me being top lane is probably better because you know they can't they can't contest us on top tower 3v3 and Zed has mid priority so essentially 4v3 or 4v3.5 i also didn't go for the gank bot lane because i'm like i'm pretty sure i'll just die if i go in like this i'm pretty sure we don't win 2v2 just the thought and i don't really want to risk it so who cares just back out of it and uh why risk giving a lead anyways i start sniffing a lot of action is happening in the top lane and i say hmm time to kill someone right here the moment Ari looks at me with a spell or anything that's when I know she has a slight time window of like vulnerability which I can press my R on also unstoppable by the way but I know she doesn't have her R because she used it earlier to try and kill Zed so she dies next up what happens here is uh hmm we're getting choked out we're actually getting poked down etc and I think I missed a nulti or something so essentially yeah getting choked out what I have to do here is to cover for my carries. I know a Kled ult is coming, so I tank it. Um, I use my E to reduce a bunch of damage if I can. I'm just kiting the fight until it looks good. I'm like full hit point, but like, you know, could get bursted down and I don't really have any cooldowns, so don't really care. Can't do anything and I'm just like, okay, so we won the fight and then we just dropped the Rift Herald and essentially at this point, the game's over. Or is it? The Rift Herald dies, but it doesn't matter, we cause pressure force them to stay top and uh yeah i say you know what rumble gets bot tower i'm gonna get mid tower hopefully my team in top lane doesn't die and you know they're just doing their own thing i'm like okay well honestly i can't we can't siege i do ping them to go away uh i have other plans to you know do but it's essentially they get a kill on ezreal i have no idea what's going on top um to our bot and i'm like saying that so what i'm just being like is conveying the information i Thought they should go for top. I'm pretty sure someone's chunked out. One is dead, so that means, hmm, there could only be two top lanes, so I could collapse, and that's 4v2 on a tower. So that's a free tower, but who cares? They surrender. And finally, in the next game, that was the title header of the game that I always, you know, put in the title and uh, want some more attention to, will be this new new game. Now let's see what happened. Hmm, top lane dies. What's new? 
I have a Caitlyn Karma bot lane. So essentially what I want to do here is make sure they don't die to Ezreal Sona. Uh, I mean, Caitlyn will win every lane. So I'm just kind of trying to give him some control. I think I maybe should have cucked him at his blue, but uh, eh, whatever. I go to his Gromp and I say, mm, gimme. If you can do this and walk into the jungle and cuck him like this uh, for free, then do it. But if you can get collapsed on or whatever, eh, be careful. And as you can see, I'm pinging that Rex I could do this little burry gank. So I'm trying to cover just a little bit uh, to make sure they don't die and hoping they don't. Um, but uh, mid laner dies, hmm, what's new? One of those games, right? So I'm like, all right, this is going to be a difficult one. Uh, I do essentially all I can to cover my bot lane from the Rex I kill. I'm pretty sure he's like recalling or something, or he's still trying to do a cheesy gank, but not too sure. I can't do dragon. Mid lane just died. Hmm. So I'm a little worried. What if Syndra starts walking down and suspects something? Then I'm dead. Uh, the other way is I could risk it, but maybe I might die. I do know that Syndra will be wanting to go into recall after getting her own kill. So yeah. Um, essentially though, it's like a hard mind game because you don't know what to expect uh, what happens in solo queue because you're not too sure. You have an idea of what people will do, but like people do the most unexpected things, right? So Rex like going top after being spotted a bunch of times, that's uh, that's definitely the right move to do. Because what he did after Gromp, after me spotting and like taking it, he just said, all right, screw it. I'm recalling going top. Go to the winning lane, let's do that, which is smart. I agree. I guess I could have got Cloud Drake for free. Hmm, I didn't have wards. It was just, if my mid laner was up, then I probably would have done it. But since he was dead, it's like, oh, it's so risky if they suspect something. And I'm pretty sure he has like barrier or something. So he doesn't have teleport to give me some pressure. So I'm just like, hmm, hmm. But luckily my bottom lane is winning. And now, since I do see my bottom lane is just shitting on them, I kind of want to play around them. Top lane, you're screwed. Mid lane, you're screwed. And you may be wondering, but Pants, you gotta get them in the game, bro. You gotta gank the losing lanes. Keyword, losing lanes. All right, so this is what could possibly happen. You go gank a losing lane, because you apparently are feeling forced to. And something like this happens. This is actually really stupid. But um, I do know Rek'Sai shouldn't be here, so I'm like, okay, whatever. But uh, essentially, if you gank a losing lane, and let's say the enemy jungle layer appears, like uh, you go into the 2-0 Fiora lane, jungle appears, you're both dead. That is always the possibility. So if you go do the 3v3 bottom with your 1-0 Caitlyn, do you think you'll win? Probably, most likely. And look, look what happens. We're fighting bot lane. I'm just a little scared of Syndra because she could one-shot me randomly. So I don't know if I want to do that, right? And yep, it's a hundred percent working. Uh, I was gonna kill him, I think, with that blast cone or something. But then, yeah, they do that. So I'm like, okay, we'll uh, we'll do Gromp, and maybe we'll try do a dive bottom, or I do Dragon. Hmm. I don't think we can dive in time actually. So I just do a Gromp and then Dragon. They got it by themselves. So whatever. Next up. Um. So you know, again, play around top lane. Camille says I'm gonna TP top to try and get a kill. She ults a Sona, but then I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. This is looking kind of bad, right? And we get the double kill. All right, it was looking good. Ah, but shit. Everyone starts roaming. You know who else has TP? That's right, Fiora. And we do not have mid priority. So Syndra comes up as well as Corky, kind of being in base. You could say, damn, Pants, that's a bad dive. You're stupid, but in reality, that's not me initiating, that's Camille. Essentially, when she ults in, hmm, if her team doesn't follow her, she's gonna die for free. If we run out, we probably will get collapsed on and die. Still, because we committed way too hard at that point. So yeah, it's just like, it's a team game. Gotta do team things. Like, I'm literally Nunu, I can't initiate shit. I just run around and snowball people. Great. Again, this game is not about Camille. This game is about Caitlyn and Karma, and also me. So anything that I do is good. Anything that Caitlyn and Karma do is also good. Anything that Camille does is bad because she's behind. She can do follow-up things. She can clean up after team fights happen when me and Caitlyn and Karma have done things. But what she should be doing is either like doing her own thing, pushing lanes, not being aggressive. She just has to let us carry her in a sense. She also played this horribly. I'm pretty sure she's a top lane main, but yeah, she's playing it super bad. Um, and essentially, it's time to kill the Fiora who is overextending and trying to get her solo kill. Luckily, Baron is not on the map, so we can do this. I'm a little scared that she can kill me. Like, actually pretty scared. She almost does, 
thank you, Guardian. I don't have to use Flash. But no, this game is still looking grim. Caitlyn just died, our 1v9 player. So even she says, all right, game's over. Um, a lot of us say it's not. I haven't died yet. I have faith in myself. I have one death, not negative yet. So the potential in me of caring, or like, you know, whatever, uh, the potential in me is still high. But I die once, then I could be, it could kind of be over. At this point, we're in very losing situations. Um, their top lane and mid lane have back AK their bot lane. Uh, so I'm just like, all right, this is the time to get bear control. I know they're on a recall, so let's just get control of this. And I say Hail Mary, because at, at this point, we're losing super hard. And if they can control, we're essentially just going to be... Bleed it out of objectives, so I'm like, Hail Mary, I don't give a fuck, it's time to do something interesting. It's time to be aggressive and do something unexpected or aggressive. Unfortunately, my Camille quits at one of the worst times in possible of a game, and I'm like, oh, okay. So essentially what I'm trying to do is wait for the Sona to walk in, wait for a squishy target to walk in so we can just burst them, hopefully, you know, Caitlyn Trap, etc. They probably have warded, but they won't face check. There's a possibility they might, but we do know that the Baron is warded, um, but also fire is coming up, so we want them to go to Dragon. But then I'm like, you know what? Let's just do it. I don't care anymore. It's time to do something aggressive. It's time to force out something. So I say, let's start it. Finally, they know, and once we see them coming, it's time to back off. We don't want to die. We baited out the DP. It's time for us to retreat and just, you know, that's fine. That's the objective we wanted. That's something. Um, and yeah, now they're on it. And now this is really good if they are on it. Because they're forced to be locked in into a Baron Pit. But of course they want to try and fight us. But we know it's not low, so we're just trying to like... Make sure it doesn't get stolen, but we get 3 man ulted. And we're just like, oh shit. But fortunately, Karma kites us out. Their engage is screwed. If Rexley had burrowed into us, oh boy. That would have been really good for them but I don't think they were on the same page. And now I thought, hey, it's a good time to win this team fight. That's looking really good. Unfortunately, oh, Fiora 1v9 and uh, yeah. It was looking good. I mean, wasn't it? It looked super good until Fiora got her ulti. So we do go three, four, three. Honestly, that is really good. Also, this comment has nice side steps. But yeah, three for three, really good. Our comp is really good scaling. Rexley falls off, I'm better. Camille also scales. Three for three is always a good thing. Even a two for three, it's still good. And you can see I type in chat right now. It's time, Hail Mary. Don't give a fuck. I want to force something and I want to do it fucking right now. It is super unexpected that I do something like this. And that's why my whole team is on the same page. Sindra is dead, let's go, let's do this. Sindra died from Corky, by the way, didn't show it, but like, yeah. Give me this Baron. Sona doesn't even have ultimate, so this is mine, and I can't be stopped. I can always outsmite a Rek'Sai. Um, and they fight a 4v5, which means, hmm, that's pretty good, isn't it? And now I'm an ultimate backup, and it's time to kill them all. So, yeah, I'm Nunu, I'm a tank, I can tank Baron, 4v5, let's go. What I would have previously done is maybe just like dilly around the Baron pit, maybe get some control and like try and make a pick. But instead, I was like, I didn't care. I feel like doing it. Let's just force something and try and see what happens. Cause like, yeah, we have Caitlyn, we have Corky, very nice. Their initiation, not the best. If they had maybe Orn or something, okay, maybe a little scary. But yeah, I said it was a good time to do it. This is a misplay though, because our Camille just died to that whatever you just saw. Um, and I was like, God damn, the dragon goes away. This is so sad. But if Caitlyn died, game over. Almost, well, well, well it makes it harder, but like, yeah. Um, I think we should have just go up mid tower and then gone to dragon and said we went for two towers But we have to give up dragon But essentially the better call is mid tower then dragon because they can take it after our recall But if we go for a tower then dragon they can't take anything But instead we go for three objectives which they can contest easily But you always get into the mindset where like oh my god it's inferno I need this so yeah it kind of sucks but whatever That's a bad way of thinking because you will do risky things for a dragon that you can't contest And it's just like yeah, it's just bad. Just think of objectives like objectives. Don't think of it as like Inferno, as like the third Inferno, you know? You can still win if they have three Infernos. Just don't throw away your lead. This Baron, like, dance is so tricky because, like, I don't want to, I don't want my team to, like, funnel and just die. I'm just hoping that, like, my team will, oh my god. Like, it's just, this is such a crazy fight. To be honest, I'm thinking here that, like, hmm, 
I don't know. What if they initiate under Kaylin, then we die? It's just... God, there's too much things to think about. I think Kaylin wants us to do it, and okay, that's fine, but like, I'm just hoping that we don't get like five man stone ultied, flashed on, you know, etc. And it's just like, goddamn. But we do have to force things out, so yeah. Um, we do win the team fight, and it's like, alright, this is time where we can do the Baron because Camille's dead, and uh, she's not worth anything, but their Fiora and Sona are worth something. So let's do it. But yeah, you can see from like a 9 kills to like 15 or 13 deaths. We didn't let them have full control of the map. We always wanted some control, but we couldn't because, you know, if they want a 5v5, it's a little scary. But yeah, they initiated on us right here. Our Kaylin does die off Rek'Sai and Fiora. Um, luckily, we do have another carry called Corky. And since we have two carries, good. We have a lot of sustained damage. And yeah, it doesn't matter if Kaylin dies because we got the best champion in the game, Corky, who gets his Penta. Honestly, they might have been able to stop us from killing the Nexus because they were responding really soon, but uh, they surrender. So, what Koki did was kind of risky, but the pentakill, ooh, too juicy, right? But anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We will be at 616 LP. Hopefully, you guys learned a lot. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.